Stadium in Indianapolis. It's the IHSAA Baseball State Championship game. Brought to you in part by your friendly neighborhood pharmacist in green at Hook's Dependable Drug Stores. By American Fletcher National Bank. American Fletcher says, we want to be your bank. By the 350 agents of Indiana Farmers Mutual and Town and Country Mutual Insurance Companies. And by your Central Indiana Coca-Cola bottlers. And now to call the play-by-play, -play, here is WIBC's Jerry Baker. Hello and welcome to the finals of the State High School Baseball Tournament live from Bush Stadium here in Indianapolis. The victorious Evansville Wrights Memorial Baseball Club this afternoon will take on a very talented group of Logan's Port Berries. And gather on either side of me tonight, the coaches of both of those ball clubs. Quentin Merkel of Evansville Wrights, they have now won 59 consecutive ball games. And congratulations on the victory this afternoon, Quentin. Thank you. Tell me about the ball game briefly. You only got three hits in beating Columbus East, but 13 walks certainly contributed to the victory a great deal today. Well, that's right. When you get 13 walks, you don't have to hit the ball very much, and uh, we we're going to make them throw strikes. That was our, our thinking. Now, tell me about tonight's baseball game. Who are you pitching? We're going to go with Don Mattingly. And tell me about Don. Well, Don's a senior. Uh, he's been playing four years far, and uh, he's a terrific athlete. He plays, uh, he plays football plays basketball, plays baseball, he does everything. I know Jim is standing alongside, and you don't want to re reveal any game plans, but what about tonight's game? How will you attack it as compared to this afternoon's game? Well, we're just going to try to play a good ball game and do the best we can. That's pretty basic, I guess. Quentin, good luck to you. Thank you. Congratulations, by the way, on the string. One quick question again. Has the pressure of 59 in a row and going for perhaps a national record put any extra pressure on you and, and your guys? Well, not now, I don't think. Not in tournament play. You know, the pressure's on, regardless of what your record is. Right, good luck this evening. Thank you very much. And Jim Turner of the Logan Sport Berries, who had a much more interesting ball game this afternoon. They won it, but I guess in the later stages of that game, Jim, that last half of the seventh inning, or the top of the seventh, you must have gotten a little nervous when the score began to creep up a little closer. I did. Uh, Laporte's a fine ball club, and any time you play a team like that, They've got something saved for that last inning. He was putting it in his good hitters, and they were just dinking the ball. They were trying to move the ball somewhere, and uh, they did give us a scare. There's no question about that. Six to three of the final this afternoon as Logan Sport wins it over a very good Laporte baseball club. Now, Quinton says there's no extra pressure on in the tournament. You play as good as you can as long as you can. How about your approach, Jim? I would agree. Sure. There, well, there's pressure all the way through, right. I think. But I think by this time... Uh, after all, this is the grand prize. The kids have been through this for, what, eight games now? And I think uh, they've already felt all the pressure they're going to feel. So now I think both teams should have settled in and should play a good ball game. How about your pitcher tonight? Well, Eric Sweet is uh, much the same kind of pitcher that uh, Quentin's boy is. He's an all-around athlete. He's an all-state football player. He's a starter on the basketball team for two years, and uh, he's been uh, a varsity baseball player for three years, so it should be quite a duel. Good luck to you also. Thank you very much. You've met the coaches. We'll meet the players and get the opening pitch in just a moment. You don't need a poet to let a friend know you care because there's an American greetings card from Hooks for just about every wish thought or feeling you might want to express. Feelings of joy, of sorrow, thoughts for today, and hopes for tomorrow. You'll find them all at Hooks. of the national anthem the presentation of the colors the two ball clubs exchange handshakes between the pitchers mound and home plate we are set to go now must have yeah. been some scene sally how do you know that you uh, hello again everybody i'm jerry baker indeed proud and happy to have you along tonight i think we got a showdown here that you're going to really enjoy the number one team in the state of indiana the evansville wrights memorial tigers coached by clinton merkel they are ranked number one of the state the record coming into tonight's ball game is 29-0. They have won 59 consecutive ball games. The record, in case you're wondering, on a national level is 65, set by a ball club in Watsahatchee, Texas, in 1924 through 1927. 64 also in a row by St. Benedict's of Newark, New Jersey, 1946 through 50, and also by a team in Naugatuck, Connecticut, in 1969 through 1973. So they cannot reach the record this year, but next year, who knows? Now let's check the umpires for you. At home plate tonight would be Eric Harmon. He'll be on the left of your screen. First base umpire Tom Hendrickson. Second base will be Richard Gebhardt. Fred Schultz will be at third base tonight. Also working Bruce Neck and Max Cameron. 
Those are the men in blue, and here come the Evansville Wright Memorial Tigers. Logan Sports Berry is coached by Jim Turner, ranked number six in the state, 28 and four coming into the ball game. The only losses to Richmond, one to nothing. Muncie Central, six to three. Wabai, seven to five. A loss that they took care of in good fashion when they got into tournament play by beating Wabai seven nothing in the Logan Sport Regional, and then they lost to Plymouth six to one in regular season play. Let's set the defensive alignments now for the Evansville Wright Memorial Tigers. At first base would be Merkel, that is Greg Merkel. Second base, Bitter. Shortstop would be Kramer tonight. Busgrave holding down the sack at third. Out in left field, Killebrew. Schultz in center field. Frank over and right. Paparella behind the plate. There is uh, Paparella and pitching Mattingly. Mattingly, an outstanding pitcher. He is 10 and 0 coming into the ball game tonight. They have. Got a couple of undefeated pitchers, as a matter of fact, going in tonight's ball game. Eric Sweet pitching for Logan Sport is nine and zero coming into this ball game. And Mattingly, Don Mattingly, is ten and zero. If you did not catch it this afternoon, the game shaped up this way. In the first game of the afternoon, Evansville Wrights Memorial jumped out in front of the Columbus East High Olympians, coached by Lou Giovanini, three nothing in the first inning, three runs and only one hit. He added one more in the second inning of play, four more in a big fourth inning, and that was their total of eight runs and only three hits. But Columbus East gave up 13 walks this afternoon. Here's, here is Mattingly. We were telling you about him. The big youngster is 10-0. He's a big lefty, and he can rear back and let it fly. A little bit of sidearm action from him. In the second game of the afternoon, Logan Sport victorious with a run in the first, another in the fourth, and four more in the sixth. Laporte picking up one in the fourth, two more in the seventh inning of play to make it a little tighter than it might normally have been. So ready to go now. Logan Sports Berry step in. Eric Kinneman, number four, he is the shortstop. He leads off for the Logan Sports Berries tonight. He'll face Mattingly's first delivery. That is a strike over the outside corner. One thing you will notice, and as a matter of fact, Quentin Merkel made reference to this in our pregame commentary. He told his pitcher this afternoon, throw strike. That's probably not going to change much tonight. There's the fly ball to center field. That is built on his horse. It's over his head. It'll go almost to the 395 mark. Kinnaman hits uh, second base and stays right there. So Eric Kinnaman leads off. He got the fastball right where he wanted it. Right over the center of the plate. He drives Schultz way, way, way back. You see the 395 mark out toward the TV out in center field. He cannot get to it. And Kenneman is on second base. Normally, Logan Sports got a little bit of a rally going. Mattingly will pitch him to stretch now. Kenneman gets the lead off second. There's the bunt. It's right down the line, but it rolls foul. Fourth this afternoon, as a matter of fact. They got Kenneman on in a walk, and Benson, who was up next, is flat up there now, number six. But Benson was the second batter this afternoon, and he sacrificed him down, and Kenneman eventually scored. So Turner is not at all, Jim Turner is not at all afraid to go for that early run. That might be what he's going for tonight in the championship game. Mattingly delivers. There's the butt. They're going to go to third base. There's the play, and they've got him. The Musgrave at third, and put the tag on him, and that's it. It'll go down as the fielder's choice. Now watch a good fielding position here for Mattingly. He comes off the mound, right to the ball. Now here comes the play to third base. Musgrave is right there. It's not much of a gamble at all. No contest. So Kenneman is out. Right on first on the fielder's choice. Sweet number 17 steps in now for the Berry. Right again over the outside corner. Sweet this afternoon had a double in the first, fielder's choice in the third, and had a really hard triple in the uh, sixth inning of play and eventually scored in the sixth. Two. 
Sweet. Number 17, he is the pitcher in this ball game tonight. As I mentioned, 9-0 coming into tonight's final attraction of the year. Radically from the stretch. Outside. One ball, two strikes. One man out, top of the first for the State High School Baseball Championship from beautiful Bush Stadium. You see on the corner of your screen, Merkel, who was the coach's son, holding flat. There's a base hit to right field, falling right in front of him, going through the right fielder, Barry Platt. Frank trying to track it down, finally gets it back into the infield. It goes down as a hit and an error. Sweet gets credit for a hit, a single to right, and also an error on the right fielder out there. But you want him to go to second base. Yeah, there are runners on second and third now. Rick Bragg had a to be an early shot at the ball and then it sunk on him when he finally got in on it he didn't run on top of the shoes and went carrying off down the right field line managed to get it back into the infield had it gotten through him and gone to the wall there's little question that at least one runner scored and perhaps two flat flat down on third base and here comes quentin merkel out in a hurry he wants to talk to his big lefty i don't think we saw merkel out on the mound the entire afternoon he didn't really need to be out there, I guess, because Henning went five innings, giving up no runs and three hits. Struck out five, walked only one. He was the starting pitcher, Mike Henning. Ken Killebrew came in, pitched the last couple of innings, gave up no runs. Couple of hits, struck out two and walked one. Now Merkel comes back down toward the dugout and now comes back out to say a few words to his infield. They're playing in. Got to cut off that lead run at the plate if they can. Don Mattingly from the stretch. Runners on second and third, first inning. This is Tim Grandstaff at the plate. He is the center fielder. He can powder the ball pretty good. He got it inside the park home run of the semi state. That is low. And that Lafayette semi state against ninth ranked South Vermillion. It was 1 0 in nine innings. Grand Staff in an inside the park home run in the bottom of the ninth to pick up the victory. Mattingly delivers. And there's the foul ball down the right field line. How to play. Out of one ball and two strikes. One man out. That was Kenneman. He doubled to lead off the ball game. Pratt tried to sacrifice him over to third. Mattingly picked the ball up and threw him out of third. Then Sweet singled to right, went to second on the right fielder's error, on Frank's error. Now that's where they stand. Runners on second and third. Fly ball to right field. Frank charging, cannot get to it. That'll bring a couple of runs in, or maybe just one. Good throw in and a good cutoff play by Mattingly. Runner scores. Frank comes in to make it a one nothing ball game. Watch it again now as Platt makes it one nothing. You'll see they got around late. Did grand snaps. Nonetheless, got it going right down the right field line. Second consecutive single to right. Wright makes a good, clean pickup on it. Fires the ball back in in a hurry. Mattingly makes the cutoff. But you see number six crossing the plate for the lead run. Brad Platt. And the number one team of the state. The Evansville Memorial Tigers are down. One nothing first inning is number 16, Jeff Ball. The third baseman steps in. Ron Ball to third. Here comes the play at home. They've got him dead. Musgrave, good play. Got the ball into Paparella. Two gone. Fielder's choice again. Look at it again. Ron Ball coming right at Musgrave. It's a good pickup. And he knows the runner is going. And fires a strike to the catcher, Pepperella. And absolutely no contest. Sweet is thrown out. Two gone. Number five, Barry Platt. The place. Now, if you're wondering, Brad Platt and Barry Platt. Brad is the left fielder tonight. Barry has moved over to the right. He played third this afternoon. Our twin brothers. 
moved up from junior varsity earlier this season playing rather steady baseball ball two zero oh and two two outs a run in top of the first Sport. Victorious this afternoon over Laporte. Ground ball to short. That is Kramer. Force out at second base, and that's it. So in the inning, three hits, one run, one error. A runner left. We've gone through one half inning of play. It's one nothing. Logan Sport leaves Evansville Memorial. <laughs> There's nothing like growing up on an Indiana farm, offering protection for it as part of our business. We were born over a hundred years ago when a group of Indiana farmers agreed to share each other's future misfortunes. Today, we offer broad coverage, not only farm and crop hail protection, but also home, auto, and business insurance throughout the state with over 350 independent agents to serve you. People you can look to when you need a friend. Indiana farmers and town and country mutual insurance companies. It's time, and my patio is open. I've got good music, great ribs, and open pit barbecue sauce. So let's get grilling. Mmm, great sauce on these ribs. How's your chicken? Mmm. <laughs> Sam, that sauce, you ought to bottle it. Open pit beat me to it. Grill, cookout grill. Don't forget the open pit. It'll do your cookout proud. Bottom half of the first inning of play, and the Evansville Memorial Tigers have a little bit of work cut out for them now as they come to bat. And we'll take a look at the defensive alignment now for the Berries of Logansport. First baseman is Benson. Snyder is playing second base this evening. At shortstop, Kinneman. Over at third base, Ball. There he is. Out in left field, one of the twin brothers, Brad Platt. Brand Staff in center. And then Barry Platt over in right field. Behind the plate is Brian. And Sweet is on the mound. Eric Sweet. He is undefeated this season. Nine wins and no losses. An ERA of 1.84. There's the right-hander's delivery. The pay goes down a second. We're about set to play baseball in the second inning of play. Look at the motion again now. This 9-0 right-hander here. Here it comes again. Eric Sweet. In 10 games, 53 innings pitch. Gave up only 37 hits, 15 runs. 14 of those earned. Only 19 walks and struck out 60. So he's not likely to get very many free tickets to first base tonight. Leading off for the Evansville Memorial Tigers, Larry Bitter. Number 10, he is the second baseman. Juan Kramer is on deck. He is the shortstop. And Jeff Jules in the hole. He is the center fielder. Larry Bitter, number 10, stepping in. The leadoff activity now for Evansville Memorial. They never trailed this afternoon, as I mentioned. Jumped in front three runs on one hit in the first inning of play and never looked back. They win it 8-0 over Columbus East. Ball is high. A bit of this afternoon struck out twice and walked twice, so he was 0 for 2, but he did score two runs. Each time he walked, he managed to get across the plate. Ball two. Struck out looking to start the ball game this afternoon. There's the strike. Two balls and a strike. Better against first base. Larry Bitter on first. And Ron Kramer, the shortstop. Number 17 steps in. Kramer hitting 255 on the year. A couple of doubles, a couple of triples. Good. And the steal is on early, and he's safe. Well, he didn't waste any time. Did Quentin Merkel? He sent Bitter in a hurry. Watch it again. Walt Bitter gets a beautiful jump on the pitcher. Now, there's really no contest here. A good throw by the catcher, Brian, but not enough on it to throw him out. Bitter stole a base this afternoon also. Ball two. Ron Kramer walked. 
walk three times. And then lined out to first base. And the 8-0 victory today. Ball three, and the pitcher and the catcher want some conversation now. Brian and Sweet conversing on the mound. Thirteenth State High School baseball tournament. The crowd will not be as large as this afternoon, but it's a good-sized crowd, and if it's anything like this afternoon, it'll be a noisy one. There's the strike at three and one. Evans Bill Memorial getting their first crack at the bats tonight. Ground ball up the middle. Picked up there and going to first and scooped out of the earth beautifully by Benson. For a moment there was thought about going to first from the, the third base to cut off the runner. And a quick change of the line. Now watch it again. Ground ball up the middle. Short stop, Kinnaman comes over, looks at third, changes his mind, goes to first, throws it in the dirt, and Benson digs it out. And Jeff Schultz steps in. Jeff Schultz, number 25. He is the center fielder. There is Schultz. Bounding left-handed. Now Jim Turner wants to come out and talk to his pitcher. A conversation from Turner. Turner has been around for a number of years now with Logan Sport. Been the head coach since 1967. He is a history teacher there. Also teaches driver's head during the summertime. Assistant coach is uh, Larry Jones. The junior varsity coach is Rich Wild. They've been helping Turner since he took that head position. So that crew has been together for quite some time. Dar Shively was the pitcher this afternoon. And could indeed come in and pitch some tonight if he had to. He went six innings this afternoon, gave up three runs on seven hits. Soft toss to third, no contest there. That is Larry Bitter over there, led off of the walk and stole second, advanced to third of the ground ball to shortstop, and Schultz is in trying to tie the ball game. Squares to butt. It is a ball. One gone, bottom half of the first. But Logan's board jumped in front early, 1-0. Brad Platt scoring that lead run. Pulls it in again to strike this time, 1-1. Infield is in. Again, neither club prone to give up that early run. Because both of these pitchers have the ability to close the door right smack in your face. Go to third. Sean Musgrave at third, trying to stay close now to Larry Bitter. Not give him that much of a walking lead. That's low. And it's 2 1. Jeff Schultz for the Evansville Memorial Tigers. Base hit, left field, tie ball game, gets by the left fielder. Going almost to the wall. Rounding second and holding up. It'll go down as a two-base hit. And a tie ball game. Watch it again. Jeff Schultz hits it down the left field line. When it gets out there, Brad Platt thinks he has a play on it, and it just seems to scoot right on by him. He dies for it and heads toward the warning track. Does not get there, but it's a tie ball game. A double for Jeff Schultz. Don Mattingly, number 21. The pitcher steps in now. And the power of this Tigers ball club already begins to show. Sweet from the stretch. Runner on second. That's sure. Inside and high. Ball one. Umpire behind the plate is Eric Harmon. The Ups have had a good day. They have not been particularly hassled by any close calls. Fly ball foul. Left field down on the deck. Lou Giovannini, the coach of the Columbus East Olympians, spent a lot of time talking to him this afternoon. A couple of mild little confrontations, no great rhubarb. That is a strike on the outside corner. One one. Mattingly played first base this afternoon. Walked once, sacrificed, 
and was out, so he was over two. Through the left field and grounded out from the first baseman to the pitcher covering. Three and one, Mattingly stepping in. Full count. The designated hitter rule is in effect in high school baseball. Zim's master is the designated hitter for Logan Sport. Larry Yockham for Evansville. Fly ball, left field line. In a hurry is Platt, and he's a foul ball, but he's got it. Runs it all the way to the infield. Two gone. Battingly flies to left. That leaves Schultz down on second base and brings up Greg Merkel. Merkel, number 30, playing first base tonight. He's out in left field this afternoon. Greg scored twice. Each time he walked, he got on base and scored. Popped to third, grounded out to short. Merkel standing in. Inside the high. One one ball game. Infield playing back now. Two guards. Gets by the catcher. Joseph advancing to third base. It looked to be a good pitch. But Bryant just had some trouble controlling it. again it's a little low did catch the dirt but looked like it might have been able to be a handle now it's a two ball no strike count and the fly ball to left field Brad Platt circling under it could get it he does and that's it they go through two innings. Evans for the Royal picks up one hit, but they get the run. It's a tie ball game after one inning of play. Hey! We're going to need a new savings plan to fit our new family. I think my hard earned money could be earning me more money. Planning for tomorrow takes more than just one savings plan. American Fletcher has a variety of savings plans. There's one just right for you. At American Fletcher, we want to be your bank. You work hard. You play hard. You try to squeeze every bit of living you can out of every second of every day. You make a lot of demands on you. Do yourself a favor. Take Myodec, a high-potency vitamin formula with minerals from Park Davis. Back to live action of beautiful Bush Stadium in Indianapolis, the home of the Indianapolis Indians of the American Association. And as I mentioned earlier, as our cameras got a chance to pat around this ballpark, take a good look. There's not a better minor league ballpark probably in the entire minor league system. Well groomed. The ground crew has done an excellent job here. They put some new seats and new facilities in this year. It's quite a place. And so far, quite a ball game. One one, top of the second. Logan Sport stepping in with Phil Benson, number 11, the first baseman leading off. He'll be followed by Steve Zinsmaster, the designated hitter, and then Mark Snyder, the second baseman. Bottom third of the batting order for the Berries. Ground ball foul. Get the plate. Bounced off to the right side. There is number 11, Phil Benson. Benson was actually over one this afternoon. He struck out. And a fielder's choice. Sacrificed, as I mentioned. He's in the number two position. Foul ball left field line this time. Batted second this afternoon when Kinnaman got on to lead off the ball game. Benson sacrificed him down. Kinnaman eventually scored the lead run. But they have brought Benson uh, down to the batting order to the number seven spot here this evening. As Jim Turner, the coach of the Logan Sport Berries. Benson 
hitting 337 on the year. Five doubles, four triples, and one home run. Leaves the team in walks with 19. It's a 2-2 count now. Double pump action there and struck him out. First strike out of the ball game for Mattingly. To lead off the second inning. Here is since master the designated hitter. He was in the ball game this afternoon. Ground ball, third base. Musgrave bobbles it. Take that as an error. Since Master, a little uh, Scooby Doo ground ball down to third base. Musgrave came in to make the play. Now watch it again. Comes right at Musgrave, and he kind of catches it on the short hop. Came up, hit him in the chest. He cannot find the handle. Runner on first. Mark Snyder steps in, number seven, the second baseman. Going from the stretch and throwing fire, but it's a ball. Snyder, likewise, did not get a hit in three trips to the plate this afternoon. Then again, Logan Sport only managed three. Ah, ball. Back into the stands down below us here. Not a lot of hitting today. Laporte had four hits. Logan Sport three. Memorial had three. Columbus East actually done all the teams as far as base hits were concerned today with five and yet didn't score a run. Go to first. Well, they pulled him off. We had two pickoffs this afternoon, and there's another one right there. I don't know if we got that on replay again. Yeah, now watch this. Here is the move. He appears to be back in now. Watch this. He clearly takes his hand off the bag. There's the fake throw back to the pitcher. There it is. No question about it. The little mental miscue. Good camera work by our folks down the right field line and around first base. The big Sins master off the base. He is picked off. For a moment or so, Merkel had thrown the ball back to the pitcher, Mattingly. Zinsmaster at least thought so. Started to at least get down on his haunches and get his breath. And there's the swinging strike. Well, that's about as embarrassing as it can be. A couple of times this afternoon, some beautiful pickoff moves. It's a 2-2 count. Scoreboard shows 3-1, but it's incorrect. It's 2-2. Uh, Snyder was up there trying to get a rally going for Logansport. That's it. That didn't take long. Snyder looks to the third strike. Three up and three down. Bottom half of the second inning. The tie ball game at 1-1. One -one. The most stunning, statuesque, sensual, and sensational new screen personality in America. Susan Anton in Golden Girl, starring James Coburn. You'll love Golden Girl, even when you know her secret. Rated PG. Now playing at the Washington Square, Castleton 2, Lowe's Quad, and Meridian Drive-In. Bottom half of the second inning of play. Evans Bill Memorial coming to the plate. It'll be Dave Paparilla, Sean Musgrave, and Larry Yockham, the designated hitters. Step in. Face the wheeling and dealing of Eric Sweet. Not know on the air. Big right-hander. Had a 1-0 lead in the first inning. 
Evansville Memorial came right back and tied it as Bitter managed to work in for a leadoff walk and attempt a round to score. For Evansville, one run on one hit for Logan Sports, one run on three hits. Out of there. And here comes Paparilla to the plate. He is the second baseman. First three times up this afternoon, Dave Drew walks, scored third time he walked, then lined out to the pitcher. Cutting off the curveball and got it. Ten working behind the plate for Logan Sport. Ground ball was to be through the hole. Good play for the shortstop Kenneman. Can he get it there? He cannot. Looking out as a base hit. So Pepperella leaves off the second inning with a base hit to short. Gets by the third baseman. Ball. Good backhand stop by Kenneman, but he couldn't get enough on it. Grave, number 14 steps in. Sean playing third base tonight. That's a good arm. Shows the butt but takes it away and picks up ball one. One ball, no strike. Eric Sweet going to first base. Come this stupid fool! Look what you've done to my work! Every sense of a masterpiece! Uh. The greatest collection in the entire world! Uh. Watch him, Sergeant! Uh. He'll kill you! Number 11, Bill Benjamin, oh, going to oh, the first. Oh, there is the bunny legal foul. Oh. Most Lafayette, four and one. Shively had eight strikeouts in that ball game. Then beating South Vermillion, right number nine of the state, one nothing in nine innings. Saw that uh, inside the park home run of the night by Grandstaff. Sweet, 14 strikeouts and no walks in that ball game. And of course, the Evansville Wrights Memorial story has just been a phenomenal one. They have done, well, just wondrous things for this baseball club down in the pocket city. They were here last year and won it, so they're back to try to defend that title. One outside, two and one. 59 consecutive victories. If you can believe Quentin Merkel, and why couldn't you? He says it's no big deal. The pressure is there when you get into tournament play, regardless of your record at that moment. There is the butt going right back to the pitcher. Sweet will go to first base. The sacrifice works. Paparella moves down to second base, puts him in scoring position, and brings up Larry Yakin, the designated hitter. are a lot in high school baseball. If you're a starter in the game, you can go out and come back. But if you're a substitute, once you enter the game, that's it. If you go out again, no more uh, re-entry for you. Third ball strike catches the inside corner of the plate. Evansville won the Jasper semi-state. They beat Bloomington North 6-0, hitting a three-hitter there. And then 10th rated Jeffersonville, 13-8. Oh, good curveball. The long-awaited showdown between Evansville, Wright Memorial, and Jasper didn't come about because Jeffersonville got to Jasper before uh, they had a chance to. Outside corner, but didn't get it all. One ball, two strikes. Paparilla down at second. Sacrifice there by Sean Musgrave. Jockham at the plate. Paparilla gets back in. Two guards. And the number nine man of the batting order, Rick Frank, steps in. Rick playing right field. He is number 12. Struck out three times. Once looking, twice swinging this afternoon. I'm sure he feels he is due. There's the curve on the inside, but it's too much inside. A 349 hitter on the year. One double, one triple, not much of a power, uh, power swinger. Ball two. 
Bottom half, second inning, tie ball game at one. Two men gone. Evansville Memorial at the plate in the presence of Rick Frey. And it's low. And it's 3 0. And Larry Bitter is on deck. Good shot from our center field camera looking in tonight. And it's ball four. That is the second walk given up so far in this ball game by Eric Sweet. And the first one cost him the run. He walked better to lead off the ball game, and he stole second. Maddie's to come around and score in the double by Jeff Schultz. Looking down the third base box, down at Clinton Merkel. There's the sacrifice right back to the pitcher. Sweet's got it going to first, and that's it. No runs on one hit, no errors. We have gone through two innings, and it's Evansville Memorial and Logan for it locked up at one run apiece. Guarda, isn't that Sofia behind those foster grants? I say, isn't that my Angelo behind those foster grants? Voila, isn't that Jean Claude behind those foster grants? Oh, buddy, isn't that your girl behind those foster grants? With their fabulous looks and their polarized gradient and mirror lenses, honestly. Available at Hook's Dependable Drug Stores. Engine overheating? It can happen anytime, anywhere. All it takes is a worn-out belt or hose, and you're stuck. Don't let it happen to you. See your Auto Pro Professional Service Center today for a free five-point cooling system checkup. If the belt or hose is worn, we'll replace it with a top quality Gates hose or belt. And to top it off, AutoPro will send you $3 for the first Gates replacement belt you need. So see me now. And save at your nearest participating AutoPro service center. We have played two innings now. The State High School Baseball Championship. One run, three hits for Logan Sport. One run on two hits for the Evansville Memorial Tigers. And Logan Sport comes to the plate. They're back to the top of the order again with Kinnaman. Brad Flat and Sweet coming up. Looking at the startings of Don Mattingly. So far, he has struck out two. He got Benson swinging and Snyder looking. And has, as of yet, not given up any walks. And that goes right down the alley with what Quentin Merkel said that their game plan was this afternoon and probably would be tonight. And that is throw strikes. Eric Kinnaman, the shortstop, stepping in. He doubled to lead off the ball game to center field. Really put the one to one. Then was thrown out trying to advance to third. No balls in a strike. Infield back at normal depth. is the top hitter on this ball club hitting 446 coming into the <laughs> final strike three okay. <laughs> well, the top hitter on the club goes back to sit out now, number six Brad Platt steps in Platt got the first base and the fielder's choice is the second man up that was the ball that he bounced back to the pitcher. They went to third base and got Kinnaman. Pratt eventually came around to score the only run to this point of the game for Logansport. Stepping in now. Mattingly is high. Mattingly has walked 26 in some 60 and two-thirds innings this year. Struck out 74. That's second only to Mike Henning. Two. Good ERA of 1.49. Hitting's ERA is 126. Mattingly 149. Well, that's not giving the opposition a whole lot to work with. And they're both 10 and 0. But we're 10 and 0 coming into the uh, into the finals. And 
hitting, of course, picking up the win this afternoon, going five innings, giving up no runs on three hits. There was the strike, three and one. Struck out five and walked with one. But Henning, if need be, could come back and pitch tonight. You're allowed ten innings during the week. Trek's on down to first for the first walk of the ball game, giving up five anyway. And Eric Sweet, who singled to right, and went on to second when the ball got by the right fielder, Rick Frank, in the first inning. Well, let's see what the strategy might be if Jim Turner decides to go for the sacrifice and try to move the runner down with one gone in the third inning. <laughs> makes the move to first. Outside. I think both these ball clubs pretty well stacking their strategy based on the fact that this could be a one-run ball game right down to the wire and trying to get that one run in any way, shape, or form. That's a good pitch. Good fastball. Jim Turner will get in a bit of a huddle now with Eric Sweet, trying to get the sign straightened away. Noisy crowd. You can pick it up, I'm sure, on your sets at home. This afternoon was really a fall because all these clubs were sky high and their fans were likewise. They were really going after each other. Signs and noise galore. Foul ball over the stands, not in the parking lot. No question about it that the so-called minor sport of baseball is beginning to catch on at the Hoosier State. All of a sudden you're seeing some awfully good baseball players. This Laporte club that lost this afternoon is their uh, repertoire of people that have left that school, the high school, to go on to play college baseball and professional baseball is uh, a mile and a half long. Some awfully good players being turned on in Indiana right now. Foul ball again. Back into the stands below us down here. Now the count stays at two balls and two strikes. Eric Sweet, one for one. Don Mattingly on the mound. The big lefty set the fire. Takes the stretch and looks toward first and goes over there. Brad is black in. Brad's staff is on deck to be followed by Jeff Ball. Bob ball again. Logansport knocked off Caston, Peru, and North Miami in the Logansport sectional and did not give up a run. They then beat Wabash 7-0. That was a club that beat them 7-5 in regular season play. And it was a championship game in the Logansport region before anybody scored on them. They beat Rochester 5-2 that night. Then, as I mentioned, they won the Lafayette semi-state with victories over West Lafayette. And number nine ranked South Vermillion. Inside, 3-2. Check the strategy that Jim Turner may come up with. Over on first, Pratt sneaking a peek across to the third base coach, Jim Turner. There you see Merkel holding him on. There he goes, and they've got him picked off. There is the play to second base, and he's gone. They had him dead to right. A little bit of an argument, but not all that most emperous. Great, great move from Don Mattingly. Look at this again. Mattingly's got a beautiful move. There's the step toward first. That's the key. And a 
of course, Pratt knows that he's a dead duck right here. He's just trying to get a little bit of luck and pick up uh, a break. And there's the reason for the discussion. Looks like the tag might have been late. So Pratt is down. Bob Catcher to short. And there's two gone here in the third inning. And there's strike three. Going to raise the corn. Way up, three down, no runs, no hits, no errors. Bottom half of the third inning, Logansport one, Evansville one. With my savings balance, I should earn maximum interest and not have to pay for checking. I want to earn 5% interest on my savings and be able to withdraw money whenever I want it. Combo account, 5% daily interest on savings and no service charge checking with a $500 minimum savings balance. At American Fletcher, we want to be your bank. Picture taking can be fun and easy too when you visit the camera department here at Hooks. And with Kodak instant cameras like the few colorless day 100, all you do is focus, press the button, smile, and wait. In just minutes, you get a sharp, brilliant color picture. Of course, Hooks has all your Kodak Instant film needs, too. So remember, Hooks and Kodak Instant products for a good look at the time. I don't know if you can pick it up on your television sets, but there's a lot of wind here at Bush Stadium this evening. It was a beautiful afternoon. I mean, this morning early, it looked so we might get some rain. As a matter of fact, the local weather prognosticators were saying 50% chance or less. And it just turned into a beautiful afternoon. There's a look at Old Glory flying in center field. Wind blowing toward the east, toward downtown Indianapolis. So far, has had no effect on play, but it's a little chilly here this evening. Probably just about right for the players themselves, though. Bottom half of the third inning, Evansville Memorial stepping in on the former number 17. Ron Kramer takes the first pitch of strike. Kramer grounded out to the shortstop as the second man up in the first inning. He was the first out of the ball game. Ron Kramer, the shortstop. Ground ball down to second. It is being picked up, and, and an error will be charged, I am sure. The Sweet, who was covering first, it is. Look at it again as Kramer really picking him up and laying him down. Has put the ball down to the second baseman. Snyder scoops it up. And there's, you can see the first baseman over around the second base position. Kramer trying to uh, beat the throw, does, because Sweet, in trying to get there to beat him, couldn't keep his eye on the ball. So it's an error on the pitcher. And the runner on first, and there's a fly ball to right field, and a good play out there from Barry Platt gets it back in the infield in a hurry. Going to his knees, managing to pick off that line ride from Jeff Schultz. Here it is again, up number one. And this appears to be another one of those sinking line drives. And Platt's got a long way to go, and he gets the job done. One gone. And here is Don Mattingly stepping into the batter's box. Mattingly flew out to the left fielder to pick up the second out of the first inning. Inside, ball one. Mattingly, not only is the top pitcher on the ball, club at 10-0, he leads the club in hitting. He's hitting 588. 50 RBIs, leads the club in triples with nine, and home runs with six. He has eight doubles. There's a ground ball to short. Steps on second, goes to first. Nine and two, we've gone through three full innings. In that inning for the Evansville Memorial Tigers. No runs, no hits, one error. Nobody left on base. We've gone through three, and it's a 1-1 ball game. Over 350 good eggs. Your independent insurance agent in Indiana is a good egg. And over 350 of them are agents for Indiana farmers and town and country mutual insurance companies. Whether you need family auto coverage, or a homeowner's, or farm owner's policy, your agent will help you select the right coverage for your needs. Indiana Farmers Mutual is one of the largest writers of farm insurance in the state because of broad coverage, reasonable rates, and top flight grade A claim service. Special policies fit special needs, such as Indiana Farmers Mutual Special Multi-Peril Policy, 
which provides commercial, fire, and casualty coverage for the agribusiness owner. For the right coverage, be sure to call on the independent insurance agent near you. He's a good egg. And there are over 350 of them representing Indiana farmers and town and country mutual insurance companies throughout Indiana. Well, a quick inning. Kramer got on base by virtue of an error. Schultz then flew out to the right fielder. Good play out there by Barry Platten and Bingo Bango. Mattingly hits into the double play, and we're back at bat with the Logan Sport Perrys coming up right now. Tim Grandstaff, Jeff Ball, and Barry Platt will step to the plate in that order. And this is the top half of the fourth inning. Seven inning baseball game, the State High School Baseball Championship. Evansville Wrights Memorial Tigers won the Evansville sectional victories over Evansville Central and Evansville Wrights. And that Wrights game, Madden threw a two hitter. They beat him 14 to 1. South Spencer recently rolled over Mount Vernon to Posey County, then Tell City. And then, as I mentioned, in the Jasper semi, they beat Bloomington North and 10th ranked Jeffersonville. So each of these two clubs have beaten a top 10 ranked club to get to this particular section in the tournament. Mattingly going through his warm up tosses. Don Mattingly, 10 0. Dave Paparilla behind the plate. Greg Merkel at first. Larry Benner at second. Ron Kramer at short. Sean Musgrave at third. Half hitters left to right. Ken Killebrew. Jeff Schultz, Rick Frank. Now this is number eight, Tim Grandstaff stepping into the plate. Grandstaff, 348 hitter, leads the clubs, the club and home runs with seven. Pretty good runner, too. He had 19 stolen bases this year. Fly ball, high on the infield. Second baseman, got it. Better takes care of that. One gone. And Jeff Ball on base by virtue of Fielder's choice in the first inning. But then out on a four shot. Short stop at the second baseman to end the first inning. It's a strike. Ball moved away, but it caught the inside corner. 1-1 one, one ball game. One gone, top half of the fourth inning. Logan Sport Berries victorious over Laporte this afternoon. Did he hold up? Yes, he did. 1-1. The Memorial 8-0 winner over Columbus East. Home plate umpire tonight is Eric Harmon. Conversations over to the Evansville dugout there. Mattingly outside this time. It'll be two balls and a strike. Mattingly has, uh, as I mentioned, not given up a whole lot of walks this year. Walked only 26 batters. In 60 and two thirds innings, so he's had good control. Swing strike at two and two. If you're the superstitious sort, this is Logan Sport's year to win the. Uh, Tournament 5 3 2. They've won it twice. They won it in 1975, then again in 77. And the progression would have had them winning it in 79. Foul tip. Down into the dugout of the Logan Sport Ferries. And the count now stays at 3 and 2. One gone. Top of the fourth. 1-1 one, one ball game, all the runs being scored in the first inning. Fly ball, right field, on his horse is Frank. It'll be foul. His right of the base of the stands on the right field line. A lot of foul balls hit down there this afternoon, a great number of them. And a lot of that due to the fact that the pitcher has had such good speed for almost every ball club this afternoon. The right-handed batter system that could not get around to the ball. Some 
conversation between Don Mattingly and his catcher, Dave Paparilla. Doesn't take long. They will also, tonight, after the game, hand out the L.B. Phillips Award. Ground ball, second base, gets to a great play with the second base, but he can't do anything about it. Fine defensive effort from Larry Bitter. He knocked it down. Had no chance whatsoever to get to it. It'll go down as a base hit. Oh, this is a beautiful defensive effort now. Watch him. Number 10, Larry Bitter. There it is. Going hard to his right. Looks like he has no chance at all. Manages to get a glove on the ball. It is not free. Hillsbury dropped it. It gets free from him right there, but no chance whatsoever to make a play. Base hit. And Barry Platt, the right fielder, number five, steps to the plate. Now again, the strategy comes into play. Jim Turner's choice to go ahead and play it routinely, or with one out, you go ahead and try to give up another and hope for the base hit that'll bring that lead run home. Barry Platt on base by virtue of a fielder's choice. Actually didn't get on base. He created the situation on the force out of Jeff Ball in the first inning. So in effect, Platt was not on base. John Ball, third, good play down there. The sort of second and to pull him off the base. John Musgrave went to his left, got the ball to second baseman Larry Bitter, and it's a base hit. Look at it again now. Fine defensive effort on third baseman Sean Musgrave's part. Here it comes. He'll go to his left, gets the ball beautifully, trying to throw from a hunker down position. Cannot get enough on it. Pulls the second baseman Larry Bitter off the bag. So it's a base hit to, to third and two infield hits now. Effort runners on first and second with one man out. And it brings Phil Benson to the plate. Strikeout victim swinging in the second inning to lead off that inning. out better than the sacrifice because they still have the out to give up. He went around. Strike one. Bill Benson, the first baseman. Benson, a 337 hitter, leads the club and walks with 19. He can settle for one of those right here, I would imagine. That is low and away. One and one. has five doubles and four triples and one home run of the year. Struck out 15 times. Picked up one stolen base. Five ball two. And I would imagine that neither one of these coaches will go very long with the pitcher tonight who appears to be weakening or getting tired. It's 2-2. Two -two. Tell you right now that they're going to go as far as they can with a guy like Don Mattingly and also Eric Sweet because they've been the horses that got him this far. Looking in for the center field camera right next to the wigwam, the symbolic gesture of the Indians, Indianapolis Indians, professional baseball club. Inside low ball three. It's a three two count. Turner down at third base. You look over his shoulder. Giving signs to his ball club, trying to decide precisely what he wants done. Will the runners be moving? They are not. Foul tip. Couldn't hang on. Count remains at three balls and two strikes. One man out. Top half of the fourth inning of play. Logan's ported the plate. It's a 1-1 ball game. Mattingly looks to second and goes down there. The crowd always yells balk in that situation, but there is no balk when you're going to second base. Vincent digging in again. Lefty against lefty. It is high, and he's walking. Bill Benson walks. That is.
is only the second walk that Mattingly has given up thus far. And the bases are loaded with one man out and Steve Zinsmaster, the designated hitter, coming to the plate. Reach first base by virtue of an error on the third baseman in the, in the second inning. But Ben was picked off. outside for a ball and very quickly there is action now down of the Evansville Wrights Memorial bullpen and they will send number 15 down to go to work and that is Mike Henney and Clinton Merkel goes out for a bit of conversation they won't make the change yet because Henning just got up as I mentioned Henning went five innings this afternoon he has five more he could go tonight if need be And the group has gathered on the mound because this is really the first pressure pack situation we have incurred so far tonight. Logan Sports scored in the first inning. Evansville Memorial came right back to tie it. And then a couple of scoreless innings with no hits. Well, one hit by Evansville in the bottom half of the first, of second. Now that's been the uh, total sound of the explosion. Conference breaks up. And Henning continues to heat up. As I mentioned, they won't wait a long time for somebody to get himself in a big deep hole tonight. Mattingly's got his hands full right now. Bases loaded, one man out. If it's a ground ball, they'll come home with it. out of curiosity Mattingly has balked once this year and nobody else has Not wishing him any bad luck just checking statistics here ball two now Mattingly's got to try to find the strike zone one man gone one one ball game there's the strike two balls and one strike Steve Zinsmaster the designated hitter at the plate Master was in as a pitch hitter in the sixth inning this afternoon and flew out to left field. Five ball. It'll be down to the first baseline. Will not get the run, and I don't think. Oh, he couldn't catch it anywhere. Merkel couldn't get to it. He simply could not get to it. He was making his move down the right field line. The stands were coming up. The tarpaulin is also rolled up in that general area down there. And the ball appeared to be curving away from him. And he just simply couldn't get himself positioned. Now watch him again at the bottom of your screen. Now you can see he's trying to find himself. And the ball just floats right off the end of the glove. So it's two balls and two strikes with a man out. Bases loaded, top half of the fourth inning, and Logan Sports at the plate. Mark Snyder is on deck. Ground ball. It is in a score run. And in a probably that is a base hit. It is a hit. Mattingly just could not get to it. Ball comes across the plate with a lead run. It's a 2-1 ball game. And look at it now. Zinch Master, a little chopper now. Watch Mattingly. He goes as high as he possibly can to get to it. And the ball just barely over his reach. And by that time, the second baseman, Larry Bitter, has no chance whatsoever. And the lead run is in. And it's a 2-1 ball game now. Now there's again conversation to the whole plate. With a home plate umpire, Eric Carmen. Talking with head coach Jim Turner. Assistant coach Larry Jones. And now the third base umpire. Fred Schutz. 
being brought into the conversation. And I'm not quite sure what this is all about. In the meantime, it continues to get chillier and chillier up here. Conversation continues down along the third base line. As our vantage point high of the press box, difficult to tell what they are talking of. Coming in now for Logansport. Jeff Wild is going to go in and run. There is Wild. Jeff Wild, number two. He is a sophomore. Jumping in the hit, Wild is on first base running. Addingly delivered. It is a strike. Now Zins Master can come back in the ball game. Inside one and one. The throw to second and over to first. They are safe at first. The run scores. One defensive effort that time from Larry Bitter on second base. But the relay throw to first was not a time as you look at it again. Here comes the ground ball. Bitter will make an excellent defensive play. Here he comes. There is the move. Underhands of the shortstop claimer. The throw to first. Not in time. Now the run comes in. So Wild is out for the second out of the inning. Snyder gets on with the fielder's choice. And Platt scores again. I shouldn't say again, he scores for the first time. Two runs into the inning. Back to the top of the batting order, and number four, Eric Kinnaman steps in. He doubled the lead off the ball game over the center fielder, Jeff Schultz's head. Struck out in the third looking. Runners at first and third. Benson's over on third. Snyder is on first. Two gone. Fourth inning. Inside a ball. It's a three to one ball game with Logan Sports Berries out in front. Heading still heating up down the third base line of the bullpen of the Evansville Memorial Tigers. One ball, no strikes, two men gone. Fourth inning. Memorial fans, Merkel, Paparilla, and Musgrave will be your first three batters coming up. Our game being telecast into Evansville tonight. Fly ball, right field. And the right fielder is right there. Rick Blank takes it in, but a good inning for the Logan Sport Ferries. They pick up two runs on three hits. No errors, couple of men left. So after three and a half innings of play, it's Logan Sport 3, Evansville Memorial 1. One day, Little Red Riding Hood set out to visit her grandma. On the way, she ran into poison ivy and was bitten by a dozen mosquitoes. When she got to grandma, she was beset with a ferocious itching. Grandma, fetch the Caladryl. And grandma did. She rubbed on the Caladryl and Red Riding Hood's itching was soothed for a time. 
Caledrin, the itch reliever for the little hoods in your family. Line score in the game to this point for the Logan Sport Berries. Three runs on six hits and two errors. For the Evansville Memorial Tigers, one run on two hits and one error. Bottom half of the fourth inning of play. Evansville Memorial coming to bat with Greg Merkel, who is the coach's brother. I think I said son earlier. was his brother playing first base. Dave Paparilla and then Sean Musgrave. Those are the first three players coming to bat. And Evansville Memorial needs to get the ball moving around a little bit. Merkel flew out to the left fielder for the third out in the first inning of play. Merkel hitting 365 on the year. Seven doubles, five triples, one home run. Has been on base 19 times by virtue of the walk. And Henning continues to warm up in the Evansville bullpen. He is just about ready in case Quentin Merkel needs him. Foul ball back into the stands. Sport Barry. They're the visiting team here tonight. That's high. It's 2 2. Full count. Evansville Wrights Memorial, excellent team batting average of 336. This is sensational. Logan Sports, 377. Now there's the ball four. And Merkel draws the walk, heads for first base, and Dave Paparella will stand in. There's Merkel. Paparella, single to short to lead off the second inning. Was moved around, but he couldn't get him home. Memorial Tigers, 29 and 0 in the year, 59 consecutive victories. The national record is 65. So I'll go to first base. Waxahachie, Texas team, set that record at 65 back in 1924 through 1927. A couple of teams at 64, as I mentioned, St. Benedict's of Newark, New Jersey, Naugatuck, Connecticut high school team, 64 in a row. There is the pitch. It is low, and I think it hit him. It did hit him. Ball got away from the catcher, but it's a dead ball. Leonard cannot advance. Paparilla hit by a pitch ball. They'll move Merkel back to second base. The runners on first and second, and nobody out. And Sean Musgrave set to come to the plate. And a little bit of a conversation. Uh, just checking out the situation from Jim Turner going out to the home plate umpire. Satisfied going back to the bench. And sweet. Now we'll look over in the bullpen down the right field line and see some warm-up activity down there. And unfortunately, they've got warm-up jackets on. It is really getting cool here tonight. And it's difficult for us to tell who he's throwing down there now. Get a pinch runner also for Evansville. Looks like Bill Lambert, number 28, a senior, will come in and pinch run for Dave Paparilla. Now 
Well, we've got uh... I'm trying to check the bullpen for you. There's the strike. Warming up a righty and a lefty. There's the missed attempt to strike the corner second. And it's too late. That looks like number 19 warming up, and I've got a 19 on my roster here. Let's do some checking on that one for you. second inning. All is high and inside. Situation is this. Two runners on. Runner on first and second. One man gone. Laurie Jacob, the designated hitter, is at the plate. There are the runners. Looking right down the base path from first to second. It's a 3-1 ball game with Logan scored out in front. Ball two. Shively is one of those warming up down the right field line. Shively pitched this afternoon with six innings. Three runs, seven hits, struck out seven and walked one. And ball three. And how that pendulum of pressure and momentum can swing the other way in such a drastic hurry. Three balls, no strikes, one out. Fourth inning of play, bottom of the fourth, the automatic, 3-1. And it's Lambert down on first base, running for Paparilla. Merkel down on second. And there is ball four, and the bases are loaded. plate steps Rick Frank, number 12, the right fielder. He walked his only other time at the plate today. That was back in the second inning of play. Well, we may have to send our floor man down to the end of the hall here and check out who this gentleman is because the sheet that I have from uh, both our program and also from the uh, information that I got from Coach Jim Turner does not list this particular man's uh, number. I want to make sure we give him proper credit if indeed he comes in. He had two guys warming up down the right field line. As you mentioned, Dar Shively is one of those. But that's not the key at the moment. The key right now is what Mr. Sweet is going to do with the folks he has out there on the base path. Right back to him. He can go to any base he wants. He goes to first, but not in time. He had the force out at first, second, and third. And there are two gone. Frank got it right on the meat of the bat, but it went right back at the pitcher. Eric Sweet, he looked at home just for a split second and then decided to go to first but not in time. The runners are still on base and the bases are still loaded and two men gone. Round ball foul. Eric Sweet working out of his most catastrophic situation to this point of the ball game. Bottom of the fourth and a 3-1 lead as Logan Sports Berries has. Evans Bill Memorial at bat. It's inside into 1-1. One, one. Jockham leading off first base. Ground ball. Second baseman. Hell right through him in the center field. One runner scores. 
Two runs are going to score, and in the third base, sliding was Larry Jocko. It is an error on the second baseman, Mike Snyder. Look at it again. Right smack dab to his legs. He had all the time in the world. Here it comes at him. He gets over, gets set, and it goes right smack between his legs. The error is on Snyder. And two runs have scored. And it's a tie ball game again. Oh, man. Just when it looked like Logan Sports might get out of the inning, it's a tie ball game. the steal the second base bitter was in there standing up so Merkel crosses the plate Lambert follows him across after running for Dave Paparilla so Jockham is down on third here's the pitch on the inside corner no balls and two strikes two runs are in two men are out we're in the bottom half of the fourth inning sweet still pitching High. One ball and two strikes. That is Barry Boyer, who is working down in the bullpen. Wearing uniform 19 tonight. Oh, inside and just barely, and it goes to 2-2. So Barry thought they had that one. You can see Sweet start to leave them out. Ron Kramer is at the plate. Ground ball. It's to third base, and the lead run comes in. It'll score another one. Down to the left field line. Pratt gets the ball back into the infield, and then with a stand-up double is Ron Kramer. Right down the line. Two more runs have scored. Jockin has crossed the plate. So has Bitter, and here it is again. Right down the line between the third baseman. Jeff Ball at that baseline. And the umpire right on it. There's the left field umpire likewise making the call. There's the first player across. That is Jockham. And suddenly, Evansville has come up with four big runs in the fourth inning. And they have jumped out in front, and here comes the change in the pitching center, uh, pitching lineup. And it will be Barry Boyer, B-O-W-Y-E-R. He's pitched in nine games, 41 innings, given up 36 hits, 28 runs, 22 of those earned. His ERA is 3.73. And Eric Sweet is off the pitching job for the moment. Check his figures here. Sweet goes three and two-thirds innings. He will give up. Well, he's only given up three hits so far. Here's the uh, motion of Barry Boyer, as we told you, just coming into the lineup. Right-hander, basically an overhand style. Sweet goes three and two-thirds innings, gives up uh, one, two, three hits. Five runs. He had only uh, one strikeout to his credit. Let's see how his walk shaped up here. He walked four. And Bowyer is into the ball game in his place. Sweet has moved out to right field. There he is playing right. 
in place of Barry Platt. Which means that if uh, you wanted to, we can come back into the ball game. And pitch. Stepping in. He's one for two. He doubled in the first. Flew out to the right fielder in the third inning. Byers first delivery. Good butt. Dyer tries the field. Cannot find the handle. Everybody's safe. It'll be a base hit. And Schultz does the one thing that a pitcher does not like to have happen to him. He put it down right on his first pitch, and it's a beautiful drag butt. Your gets his hand on it, but with no chance to do anything with it. Simply couldn't find the handle, and all hands are safe. Still two men out. Runners at the hot corners. Four runs are in this inning. That's the strike. third. Schultz at first. Go to first base. Schultz is back in in good shape. Now you see Phil Benson holding him on. Four runs in for Evansville. Fly ball. That's going to be in the gap. They'll never get to it. It'll go up. And, oh, he did get to it and held up there. Good defensive play from Brad Platt. It looked to be right up the alley and Platt wouldn't got it. But a big inning nonetheless for the Evansville Memorial Tigers. They come up with four runs of only two hits in the inning. And at the end now, a four full innings of play. It's Evansville Memorial 5 of Logansport Berries 3 for the state championship. Stress can rob your body of B and C vitamins faster than you may replace them if your diet is inadequate. Stress Tab 600s help you correct overwork, fad dieting, and other stress situations. Each Stress Tab 600 contains 600 milligrams of vitamin C and B complex, plus the recommended daily allowance of natural vitamin E. So help keep your body in good nutritional balance with Stress Tab 600s, available now at your neighborhood Hooks Defendable Drugs. I need a checking account without a service charge. We'd like to have checking and savings in one account. I just don't have time for complicated bank statements. Combo account. 5% on savings, no service charge checking, and a combined monthly statement. At American Fletcher, we want to be your bank. Back at Bush Stadium in Indianapolis, Jerry Baker live with the state final championship baseball game. It's a 5-3 game right now with Evansville Memorial. A big fourth inning of play. Four innings, four runs. They have four hits on a couple of errors. And Logan Sport, after picking up two in the top half of the fourth inning and jumping out in front, now has to get that momentum going again because Evansville Memorial really the number on them. They batted around that time. Merkel leading off the inning with a walk. Then the Paparilla hit by pitch. They both came in to score. Jockham scored. Larry Bitter also scoring. As Evansville began to display some of that power they are so well known for. They're out front now by a five and three count. For Evansville, it is Mike Henning now going to the mound. Henning is out on the mound now. Number 15. There he is. I mentioned he pitched so very well this afternoon. Getting the big lefty. We'll face Brad Platt, Eric Sweet, and Tim Grandstaff.
afternoon with Henning was doing the pitching. That's low. Third baseman coming in as they squared a butt. Throw instead goes to first. Eric Sweet singled in the first, struck out in the third. One for two. Up with a one ball count on him now. And it's called strike. Sean Musgrave, the third baseman for the Tigers, in on the infield grass, coming in with the motion. There he is. Sneaking in, here he comes. And it's two balls and one strike. Henning started this afternoon ball, this afternoon's ball game with five innings. Very impressive performance. Gave away to Killebrew for the last couple of innings. At that time, they were out in front by a sizable margin. Now that is ball three. And it's three and one. Sweet is at the plate. Probably with the take sign. It gets away from the catcher. And Platt says that's enough. It is a walk. So Platt moves to second. Sweet trucks on down to first, and Kim Grandstaff will step in. Grandstaff, single to right. Pop at the second baseman. One for two tonight. And I noticed the left field umpire is going over to pick up a jacket. Right field umpire already has one on. So only the first base umpire, Tom Hendrickson, working without a jacket tonight. And still that win whips the flag around in center field. Heading on the stretch. Grandstaff butt right down the line and a rose foul. So it's one strike and no balls on Tim Grandstaff. G-R-A-N-D-S-T-A-F-F. Hitting 348. Leads the club in homers with seven. Three doubles, one triple. Has 22 RBIs. Looking for a couple right now. Seventh Bill Memorial with a tremendous fourth inning of play. Four runs in the inning, leads Logansport 5-3. It is a called strike. Randstaff tried to pull the bat away and didn't get the job done. No balls, two strikes. Randstaff looking down to third base coach, manager Jim Turner. Not much to worry about here. Swing the old lumber, or in this case, the aluminum. It is 
is foul. I hadn't mentioned that in case you were hearing a strange sound when ball hits bat. That doesn't sound like wood. That's because it's not. Using the aluminum bats for the most part. I'm not sure I saw, saw a wooden bat out here all afternoon long. Totally legal and a whole lot more sturdy. A lot less expensive to, as far as replacements concerned because they just don't break. Well, I suppose they could, but they don't do it as much as those wooden ones do. That's outside. It is one ball and two strikes. Yeah, this has been a pressure-packed ball game. Every inning has been a totally new chapter in this long playing volume of works here tonight. Free game, Evansville. There's ball two outside, way outside. Mike Henning, number 15, doing the pitching. Has walked the first two batters he has faced. Ground ball to second. This is bitter. Tags the runner, goes to first base, and he's safe. Be a fielder's choice. Here it is again. The ground ball right at Bitter. Makes the pickup. And the runner, Eric Sweet, runs right into the trap. And he just simply can't get it to first base in time, and the runner is safe. So it's Grand Staff on first. Flat of the process, shuffles on over to third base, and with one out, runners in the corners. And Jeff Ball stands in. Ball is one for one. Fielder's choice in the first. Single to second base and scored in the fourth inning. Try to score the run. They will. Here he comes. Here comes the throw to home plate. He'll score standing up. So it's a sacrifice fly. Second out of the inning. But the run comes in. In the presence of Brad Platt. And it's now a 5-4 ball game. fielder and will bat in his position because as we mentioned Sweet went to right field. He needs some kind of a law degree or some kind of a degree to keep all these players in position when you can put substitutions in the ball game such as you can in high school baseball. strikes on Barry Boyer, his first trip to the plate here tonight. One run is in, two men are out. Boyer is out swinging. But Logan Sport does pick up a run. One run in the inning on no hit. A couple of runners left. We have now gone through four and one half innings to play. It's Evansville Wrights Memorial 5 and Logan Sports Berries 4 for the state championship. <laughs> Don't miss T-shirt day, Sunday, June 24th. Give yourself a chance encounter. 
you deserve a little luck. River Downs, the wind show place. The wind place to show. Healthy competition. But some people were doubtful, and I was desperate until I got a secret weapon. That's no ball player, that's a damn girl. And my new movie is called Fast Break. From Columbia Pictures, it's rated PG, and it's really funny. There's a heavy yacht factor in this movie. Have a ball. It starts March 2nd at the Regency Glendale in Lafayette Square. Back to live action at Bush Stadium, Indianapolis. Jerry Baker with the play-by-play -play of the State High School baseball finale. It is a five and four ball game. Evansville and the Royal has the lead. Little gathering around the mound, and Barry Boyer is set to start wheeling and dealing for Logan Sport. And he will face number 30, Greg Merkel. Number 29, Dave Paparilla. And number 14, Sean Musgrave. Again, in case you're wondering if you see players taken out of the ball game, such as Merkel, and see them back in the lineup. Very simply this. If you're a starter, you can leave the ball game and come back in one time. It's doing was a strike. Boy, you're dealing again. Swinging strike. who started the ball game for Evansville Memorial when four full innings gave up three runs on six hits. Henning came in and gave up a run on no hits. Boyer set to deal again. Outside and low. Side, ball three. Full count. Round ball to short. Gentlemen, got him in the dirt. But got him. Six to three and one gone. Here's Paparilla stepping in. Single in the second. Hit by a pitch in the fourth and finally scored. Official figures now on Mattingly. Pitched four innings, gave up three runs on six hits, struck out four and walked two. There's the strike, and it's a 1-1 count now. We're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. It's a 5-4 ball game. Evansville Memorial on top. Looking for their second consecutive state championship. Strike, yes, he did go around. Last year, they defeated Blackford 7-1 of the championship game. Finished up the season 30 and 0, and thus became the first undefeated team since the playoffs began back in 1967. Logansport won it in 75 and 77. Laporte won it in 76. Then, of course, Evansville writes Memorial last year. Memorial trying to pick up some runs, but not that away. Paparilla goes down swinging. Out number two. Two gone. Fifth inning. You're looking out of the mound now with number 19, Barry Boyer. I think we touched on his statistics. Nine games, 41 innings pitch, 3.73 ERA. Yes, we did. His record is 4-3. And, and Sean Musgrave steps in. He is 0-1, a sacrifice in the second inning, struck out swinging in the fourth. Both 
both coaches now have gone to their bench as far as pitching is concerned. Line drive foul down the right field line. We had some foul balls go into the stand this afternoon, into the stands, I should say, on either side of the field like rockets. And fortunately, no one got hurt. Boy, you got to stay awake when you come to the ball game. Enjoy yourself and relax, but you better be alert. Boss Musgrave, third baseman. It's a ball and two strikes. Seven innings now, as you well know, high school baseball. So time is of the essence for both clubs. Ground ball right back to the pitcher. Boy, he'll go to first, and that's it. It is three up and three down. No running, no hits, no errors. Nobody left. After five innings of play, Evansville Memorial 5, Logan Sport 4. you put together your house. Your home needs protection against fire, wind, tornado, and extended cover. The hitting lineup, he is now playing left field. Jeff Schultz in center and Rick Frank in right. Mattingly is at first base. And of course, Mike Henning is now doing the mound work. It is still Dave Paparilla behind the plate. Kramer is short, Bitter at second, and Musgrave at third. That's the defensive alignment now for the Evansville Memorial Tigers. And the Logan Sport Berries will step to the plate in the form of number 11, Phil Benson. Benson struck out in the second, walked in the fourth. He'll be followed by Steve Zinsmaster, the designated hitter, and then Mark Snyder, bottom half of the bottom third of the Logan Sport Berries batting order. Dealing strike on the inside corner. We're in the top of the sixth, and it's a five to four baseball game. Ground ball foul behind the plate. No balls, two strikes. Strikeout victim twice tonight. And Steve Zinsmaster, the DH, steps in. He got on the error on the third baseman of the second inning and then got picked off first. One of those embarrassing little moments in life. It threw the ball over there. He was back in safely. And lo and behold, Merkel just held on to the ball. Zinsmaster, assuming he had thrown it back, moved off the base to stand up and dust himself off. Merkel put the tag on him and he was gone. No balls and one strike. The single back to the pitcher in the fourth inning. One of those little hounded in the ground type singles just over the outstretched arms of Mattingly. Swinging strike, no balls, two strikes. When you take Mattingly out and put Henning in, you sure don't lose anything. They are both 10 and 0. Their ERAs are Henning is 126 and Mattingly is 149. All you do is change the numbers. Close but no cigar. Two ball, two, what, two strikes and one ball. One out in the sixth. Outside again to Zinsmaster. Steve Zinsmaster, a junior. It's a 2 2 count. Fly ball, right field is floating foul. When they get in that area, they're going to go foul about 75% of the time unless they're really out there well in fair territory. The wind is blowing that direction. But it's like a golf shot that starts slicing on you. It just continues to do so. We have not had that many put outs for the outfielders. Though. I have to go through and look them up, but I don't suppose a half a dozen in the ball game. Jim's Master steps back in with a count 2-2. Two -two. One gone, sixth inning, 5-4 ball game. Evansville Memorial has the one-run lead. And it's inside. And close. And it's a 3-2 count. Both 
count on Steve Zinsmaster. Outside, ball four. So after hitting, jumped out in front early in the count. He let him get away. And Mark Snyder was due at the plate. And a conference and maybe a pinch runner here. Now, if Zinsmaster goes out again, if I think I'm correct, that's it for him. And you're looking at number 12 on your screen, Burt Miller. So Miller will come in to run. Wild ran for Zinsmaster in the fourth. Number 12, Miller. Burke Miller, a junior, running. Getting, getting in some warm-up pitches, just trying to keep warm. It is more than just a little chilly for a June night getting an Avalanche. And we are getting reports that there's a little bit of rain down on the field right now. We're covered up, of course, in the press box and cannot feel that. Not enough to cause any great movement down there. We mentioned we were told we were going to get some of that, but nothing severe as of yet. Crowd isn't even moving away from it. Mark Snyder stepping in, struck out looking in the second, one of the fielder's choice in the fourth. And one man gone. This is a strike. You can see superimposed on the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Miller, the base runner, being held on there by Mattingly. Don Mattingly, the starting pitcher in the ball game, now playing first. Snyder is number nine in the batting order, so you don't expect much power from him. 0 for 1 tonight. There's the crown ball. It is going to be tough to handle. They let it roll. Foul. Wise decision on the part of Mike Henning and also Sean Musgrave. Because Snyder was on, there was no way they were going to get him, either one of those fellas. So the count remains with no balls and two strikes, one man out. We're in the sixth, and time is running shy on Morgansport as they trailed the number one rated and undefeated Evansville Memorial Tigers by a score of five to four. Evansville with a strong, strong fourth inning in which they picked up four runs on two hits and one error. The hits coming from the bats of Ron Kramer and Jeff Schultz. Merkel, Paparilla, Jockham, and Bitter scored in the inning. Ground ball over the pitcher's head out to shortstop. There's the throw to first, and they got him, and the runner advances to second. So Kramer throws him up. Make it six to three if you're scoring with us tonight. And there are two gone. And now we go back to the top of the batting order. And Jerry Kinnaman. He is two out of three, or make it one out of three. A double to lead off the ball game in the first inning. And then was thrown out at third base on a fielder's choice when Pratt hit it right back to the pitcher. Two gone, sixth inning. Eric Kinnaman, K-I-N-N-A-M-A-N, stepping in to face the wheeling and dealing of Mike Henney. Fly ball, left field, it's in there. And it's going to time run, it goes all the way to the wall. Merkel is out there trying to track it down and pulling it at second base and standing up with a double. Here's Eric Kinnaman, his second double of the ball game. Comes in with a tying run. He was running for Zinsmaster. Here it is again. They got it right down the power alley. And Kinnaman did a number on it. No way in the world Merkel could get to it. He's just trying to put a stop on it. It gets past him. 
hits the warning track, goes up against the ivy in the left field area out there. Now comes to a dead halt, picked up, and Merkel throws it back in. And then with a stand-up double, it's Kinnaman. It's a tie ball game now. Five and five. Platt steps in. Platt. He is 0 for 0 tonight. On and scoring in the first by virtue of a fielder's choice. Walk in the third and walk and scored again in the fifth inning of play. Brad Platt. His brother Barry. Twin brother in the lineup tonight also. Breaking and missing. Heading for a little heat on that one. Henning has given up 12 earned runs and 66 in the third innings of play. Struck out 81. That's tops on the club. That's a strike call. Henning this afternoon struck out five, walked but one, gave up no runs, three hits, and five innings. Gillibrew also pitched very well for Memorial. No balls, two strikes, two gone. Tie ball game. We're in the top half of the sixth inning. Throw it away. Make it one ball, two strikes. Well, the folks down at Evansville have really got some things to be proud of. Their football team this year was sensational. Baseball team won the state last year, battling for it again this year. Always good basketball representatives. Swing strike, and he got it. So he has completed the inning, but it's a brand new ball game. In the inning, one run off only one hit. And after five and one half innings of play, Evansville Memorial five, Logansport five. It's an old cliche. A boy. When you're running out of bed, run out of bed. Take a break. Out we'll help get you back instead. <laughs> you can get it together when you're refreshed. And Coca Cola refreshes you best. Coca Cola. Coca Cola. C O K our thanks to uh, all the folks at the Indiana High School Athletic Association, in particular Charlie Moss, who worked so uh, closely with us tonight in getting our telecast together. And Mr. Ward Brown and his fine crew of people. Also the folks at both of these schools, Logansport and Evansville Wrights Memorial, for their cooperation, hoping to make our telecast possible. It's been a long day for our telecasting crew here. They were out uh, working both ball games this afternoon. And, uh, unfortunately, the weather was conducive to being out of doors today. All right, Barry Boyer will be on the mound. Behind the plate, number 10, Damon Bryan. Around the infield, Bill Benson at first, Mark Snyder at second, Eric Kenneman at short, Jeff Ball out of third. Here comes Evansville Memorial, and their fans begin to take a little noise into this Bush Stadium area tonight. Jockham number 18, the designated hitter, will step in to lead off the bottom half of the sixth. He popped the first of the second, walked and scored in the fourth, and looks at a called strike to start off the bottom of the sixth inning. Jockham hitting 364 on the year. One double, no triples, no home runs. Walked eight times. averages of these times.